Welcome back to another Odyssey video guys. It was about time to create a new unique items guide and in this video I will show you all the new entries from the Corfu DLC from the new packs which haven't been previously mentioned in our lists. And I will also summarize only the best of the best gear from all the existing lists so that you have one distinct guide for all the crazy unique items which you really have to get in your builds and not the shitty ones which we never used anyway. And on top of that I will also add a couple of easy lootable perfect gear items which you can also find across the Greek map. But before that I have more news from Ubisoft because it seems they have not only fixed all the error messages at Zargon's shop but they also seem to have fixed the Orichalcum collection bug on Corfu Island. Previously it was not possible for some players to collect all the 50 additional Orichalcum from Corfu Island because whenever you tried to collect them they were not added to your total Orichalcum count. But now this seems to be finally fixed, you can now go to Corfu Island and collect your Orichalcum and it finally counts towards your total. So happy Orichalcum farming for everyone and big shout out to Toa1104 for actually mentioning this in our discord server. But now let's get back to our unique weapons. Assassin's Creed Odyssey has limitations on what is possible to engrave on any gear type. For example it is not possible to engrave crit chance or melee resistance on melee weapons but there are actually some items in the game that are breaking these engraving rules and that makes them so special because sometimes only with them you can reach 100% crit chance in your build or even 100% melee resistance and make you a complete god mode fighter build. Some of the most important unique items are the melee weapons that can actually have crit chance or even crit chance at full health because we just got a new weapon that actually has this crazy perk. The most important melee weapon with crit chance is still the copycat sword. It can be found from the really bad day quest line in Locris. You have to help all the three local people and when you kill the fake eagle bearer he will drop the copycat sword for you. The copycat sword has warrior damage, crit chance and damage on spartan soldiers. The last perk is really rubbish and to make the copycat sword actually decent you always have to engrave it with damageous swords. A crazy new addition to the melee weapons with crit chance is the Typhoon's Axe from the Tartarus weapons pack. It has warrior damage, 20% crit chance while full health and 200% critical damage with fire abilities. However these 200% crit damage pretty much suck because the 200% crit damage only activates when you manually trigger the fire ability and only after a first full cycle. But the 20% crit chance at full health makes this weapon still a very good weapon you should definitely keep in mind when you make your build. The two other melee weapons with crit chance are the Master of Waters which you can get from the Test of Judgment storyline. In order to get this weapon you have to pick Poseidon as your god and at the end in the volcano dungeon you will find a secret water filled room with a tiny chest that actually contains the Master of Waters spare. The Master of Waters has hunter damage, crit chance and an adrenaline perk. There's also a new legendary spear from the Zeus starter pack. It has hunter damage, crit chance and a legendary perk that actually triggers a cooldown effect. So the perks are very similar to the Master of Waters and both of these spares are not particularly useful. You would have to engrave Damtra spares on any of these two spares to make them actually decent, wasting a lot of other good options. There's actually a way to get a much better almost perfect weapon for any weapon type that has 10% crit chance on it. In order to do that you have to get a perfect weapon. That means you have to get a weapon with warrior damage, critical damage and damage with that weapon type. It could be a dagger, it could be a blunt, an axe, whatever you want. And then you have to use the Talon dagger engraving which has 10% crit chance but minus 50% critical damage. When you put this engraving on any perfect epic weapon it will cancel out the crit damage with the negative crit damage giving you a weapon that has warrior damage, damage with your weapon type and 10% crit chance. You can create this perfect combination no matter if you have a perfect dagger, a perfect sword, blunt, axe, staff or spear. Just engrave the tail on dagger engraving and then you have warrior damage, damage with your weapon type and 10% crit chance. All these weapons will be as good as a copycat sword and they will also give you much better spares with crit chance. There are two items in the game which have melee resistance on an irregular spot and you can use these two items to get over 100% melee resistance and make you 100% invincible versus every melee attack. The most important item of this type is the Spartan Javelin. The Spartan Javelin can be found during the Mykonos storyline. You have to follow Taleta's quest and help Taleta's by killing all the Athenian commanders. The last commander is located on a farm on Delos Island and it is very important that you don't bow to him and just 
go and kill him or recruit him so that he is actually dropping his weapon because he is dropping the Spartan Javelin. The other item with 30% melee resistance on an irregular spot is the Oxesia's Helm of Darkness. The Oxesia's Helm of Darkness is dropped by a weekly bounty mercenary from one of your weekly Orichalcom quests and this mercenary returns every 42 weeks. The next time this weekly mercenary will return will be at the end of December or early January 2023. If you still need more crit chance in your build and you don't want to use it on your weapons, you can also go for some special gear items. One of the craziest items in the game are the stolen isobracers. The stolen isobracers can be found in the third episode of the Atlantis DLC in the Fort of Meneseas when you follow the storyline where you kill a certain boss in that specific room. The stone isobracers have 10% crit chance and 20% crit chance at full health, giving them a total of 30% crit chance at full health, which makes them an incredibly crazy item. Another very powerful item that is also often used in my builds is the Belt of the Sphinx. The Belt of the Sphinx is from the Sphinx set and it is the only belt in the game that has 20% crit chance at full health. So instead of the usual 10% crit chance, when you use this belt you can get 20% crit chance at full health. Since you can still engrave 100% crit damage and you don't block any other crit damage engraving, this is sometimes a better choice than the stolen isobracers. On a side note, it is also worth to mention that if you need more crit chance and you can only place it on your gear items, then you could still use Aza the Nemean Lion set and make your build around the Nemean Lion set because it has a set bonus with 10% crit chance and 50% crit damage, or you use the Nemean Lion set engraving which still has 5% crit chance and 25% crit damage which can also be engraved on belts. If you want to get over 1000% critical damage in your build, then you might need the Minotaur Maze. The Minotaur Maze is the only melee weapon in the game that has 100% crit damage while full health and you can still engrave another 50% crit damage under it. The only downside of this weapon is that it is only a blue item which means it has only 3 engravings. But these engravings will be more powerful than almost every other weapon in the game. The Minotaur Maze can be found from the fake Minotaur questline in Pefka. You first have to collect all the 3 tokens and then you have to do the quest What Lies Below the Surface where you are attacked from bandits who just want to rob your money. If you survive that attack and you complete the quest you will be rewarded with the Minotaur Maze. And don't forget you can also get a second one when you start a new game plus. The Darksteel Mask is the only helmet in the game which has 100% crit damage on a helmet. Normally helmets can only have 50% crit damage, but the Darksteel Mask can have 100%. Sadly the Darksteel Mask can only be looted when you buy Olympian gifts from Zargon. So you have to have a lot of luck until you finally pull the Darksteel Mask. The Persian Warrior's Waistband is also a special unique item because it is the only belt in the game that has 50% crit damage. Normally you can only find belts in the game that have only 100% crit damage and you cannot engrave 50% crit damage on it. But on the Persian Warrior's Waistband you have 50% crit damage already on the item and you can engrave another 100% giving you 150% critical damage on a belt. The Persian Warrior's Wasteband can be looted from a chest on Zalamis Island. Simply go to the ruins in the south and loot every chest on that location. Normally you cannot engrave critical damage on bows, but there are 4 bows in the game which have this perk. But only 2 of them are worth to mention. The first of them is the Oaken Bow of Chambers. The Oaken Bow of Chambers can be found in the Tomb of the Daughters of Atlas in Arcadia. The Oaken Bow of Chambers is one of the finest hunter bows in the game and the best hunter bow if you don't play with the Bighorn Bow. Of course the Bighorn Bow beats it by miles and since we found the Bighorn Bow we have never used this weapon again. However, it remains a very valuable item. The best bow for pure assassin builds that don't want to do anything else than increasing assassination damage is the Bandit Bow. The Bandit Bow has assassin damage, 10% crit chance and 50% critical damage. Similar to the Darksteel Mask, the Bandit Bow can also only be found from Olympian Gifts. So if you want to get either the Darksteel Mask or the Bandit Bow, I would encourage you to just pull Olympian Gifts as long as you get both of them. You will get a Helix Door item in every 6th or 7th Olympian Gifts anyway and on all the items in between you have a chance to get either the Darksteel Mask or the Bandit Bow. You don't always have to go to the blacksmith to find perfect epic weapons, you can also find a couple of perfect epic weapons or near perfect epic weapons very easily from quest locations or loot. The best example for that is Hater's Harper which is a perfect epic sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage with swords and you can easily find this very early in the game when you do the a friend and need quest in Attica. Just lie to Hater to keep the sword and the sword is yours. 
Another near perfect sword with warrior damage, damptress swords and fire damage can be found in the Parthenon chest in Athens. Simply go inside the Parthenon on the west side and open the chest to loot it. The Boetian Rhapsody is a perfect epic heavy blunt with warrior damage, damage with heavy blunts and critical damage. You can easily find this in Boetia in the city of Thebes when you go inside the Acropolis and simply loot the chest. The Harvester of Time is a perfect epic spear with warrior damage, damage with spears and critical damage. Sadly, this is not obtainable in the game, but rather in the Helix store. But if you have some Helix credits left and you already own the big one bow, then you might actually think about spending the remaining credits on getting the Harvester of Time to get a perfect epic warrior spear. However, you can get all the perfect epic weapons with regular combinations also when you do the blacksmith reload. I have good news for everyone struggling to find the perfect epic warrior torso. There is a quest that gives you this item for free. The questline Digital Sun's Return in Corinthia will give you the task to buy two epic torsos. A cheap one which is just a regular Athenian torso or Diocles correct armor which will turn out to be a perfect epic warrior torso. Buy both of these armor items and then only give away the cheap one to the Sun and keep Diocles armor for yourself. Diocles armor is a perfect epic warrior torso with warrior damage, 10% all damage and 50% critical damage. A new unique torso that actually came with the Corfo DLC are the resort shoulder pads. That torso has warrior damage, 40% chance to ignore damage and 30% total armor. However, the total armor pretty much sucks, but the 40% chance to ignore half damage is a unique perk that can normally not occur on torsos. This torso is especially useful to get to 100% chance to ignore half damage without sacrificing any damage or perks. The resort shoulder pads will be automatically added when you finish the entire Corfo DLC. Just finish the last cutscene and when you reload your save it will just be added to your inventory. One last item I would like to mention here are the arms of the swings. Because the arms of the swings are the only arms in the game which have bow charging speed. Only with this item you can actually make a 100% crit chance 100% bow charging speed hunter build. And 100% bow charging speed means that your devastating shots will be automatically fully charged and automatically deal all their damage without waiting to charge them. That makes a devastating shot even more deadlier than it already is. Of course there are more unique items, for example the Core for Greaves which have critical damage on boots or the Abstergo boots which also have critical damage on boots. But these items also have very bad engraving combinations. The Core for Greaves also have movement speed while crouching, so they are utterly crap. And that's the reason why I did not mention these other items in this video. This video is only for the best of the best unique items, the only items you will ever need to make any build of this channel. If you want to check out all the items which have not been mentioned in this video then check out the two older guides, I will link them in the description as well. I hope you really liked this video, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.